Hello everyone, I'm CJ Willem and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Now let's get into it. Islamophobia has become one of the most pernicious forces in the world today. It has not only fueled far-right fascist movements in the West, but also Muslim genocides in the East. You know this because you've seen the headlines, but what the media doesn't investigate, like ever, are the origins of modern day Islamophobia, even when those origins are staring directly in front of our face. Now, if you look closely at this photo, then you'll see everything you need to know about the origin of anti-Muslim hatred in the Western world. Because what we have here is a dude holding an Islamophobic sign while standing next to a woman holding a placard of the Israeli flag with the words, proud Zionist and feminist. Because nothing screams, I'm an ignorant fool, more than demanding women's rights for Israeli Jews who are ethnically cleansing Palestinian women. But here they are participating in an anti-Islam rally organized by Act for America, which receives funding from, wait for it, Israel. Its leader Bridget Gabriel has just one spoke in a galaxy of Israeli-funded Muslim bashes that I'm about to reveal in this episode. But central to Gabriel's message is the notion Israel is Western civilization's front line of defense against Muslims, whom she equates with Nazis. 70 years ago, the world stood by as the Jews of Europe went out the chimneys. Today, the Jews of Israel aren't going to go quietly into the slaughter as they sit on the front line of fighting for Western civilization, fighting for all of us. She also says Islam is not a religion, but a totalitarian ideology, and that terrorism is the purest form of what the Prophet Muhammad created. But these are not her words. She didn't invent these bogus claims. They were manufactured and then hand delivered to her by the Israeli lobby. You see, from the moment Israel began colonizing the Palestinian territories with Jewish settlers in 1967, it knew it would be faced with resistance from the indigenous Palestinian population, who like any other group of people, don't like foreign invaders showing up and stealing their homes. Weird, I know. But by the mid 1970s, when anti-colonial movements swept across the Western world in response to the American war in Vietnam, the Israeli occupation was faced with a public relations crisis, as Europeans started expressing solidarity with the occupied and colonized Palestinian people. To counter this, Israel hatched a marketing plan, one that would become the pivotal moment in the history of Islamophobia in the West. This plan was put in motion in 1979, when Israel's far-right Likud party invited leading right-wing American political figures to Tel Aviv for a conference titled Islamic Terrorism. One of the attendants was George Herbert Bush, who was elected Vice President of the United States the following year. But it was at this conference that Israel convinced the Republican Party to tie Islam to terrorism in mainstream political discourse, with the aim of tying Palestinian resistance to the religion of Islam in the minds of the American public. But two key events helped the Israeli lobby cement this phony connection between Islam and terrorism in the American psyche. The Hezbollah bombing of the US Marine Barracks in Beirut in 1983 and the attacks carried out by Al-Qaeda on 9-11, which Israel seized upon as an opportunity to establish the Islamophobia industry. Quite honestly, a lot of the um, uh, sort of ideological bent comes from um, very sort of hardcore or fervent pro-Israel beliefs. And so oftentimes what we see is that the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is sort of refracted through this nasty political narrative. With the help of tens of millions of dollars from pro-Israel donors, the Islamophobia industry has spawned an array of groups and individuals who push anti-Muslim tropes and memes into the mainstream media. This is how the Islamophobia network operates. A group of foundations and donors provides the money. To date, more than $57 million. That money is given to a selection of tightly knit organizations that rely heavily on a handful of so-called experts that orchestrate misinformation about Islam. That misinformation then spreads through a larger network of activists, politicians, media, and more, creating an echo chamber around the false idea that Islam is a violent religion. And I think the Sitting at the center of this constellation is the Middle East Media Research Institute, which was founded in 1997 by former Israeli intelligence officers to portray Islam and Muslims as inherently violent and prone to terrorism. Their public relations model has since gone viral. Last year, a Jewish American magazine obtained documents showing that Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs transferred $40,000 to an anti-Muslim hate group that falsely claims that 30% of American Muslims are terrorists. Other key players within the Israeli-funded Islamophobia industry include 
Frank Gaffney with the Center for Security Policy, David Yerushalmi with the Society of Americans for National Existence, Daniel Pipes with the Middle East Forum, Robert Spencer, and Steve Emerson with the Investigative Project on Terrorism. It notes that right-wing Norwegian murderer Anders Breivik repeatedly cited these U.S. purveyors of Islamophobia in his so-called manifesto. These Israeli-funded players have now spread their propagandized narratives and talking points around the world. David Horowitz, who was mentioned in the last video, gave far-right Dutch politician Gert Wilders $150,000 in 2018, making it the single largest political donation in the history of Dutch electoral politics. And it's pretty easy to see why Horowitz handed over all those shekels, given Wilders is famous for saying, we are at war with Islam, while calling on mosque and the Quran to be banned in Europe. But if you're looking for the Mac Daddy, the big cheese or the godfather of the Islamophobia industry, then look no further than this guy, Mr. Frank Gaffney, who was appointed as foreign policy advisor by former US President Donald Trump. The Center for Security Policy has powerful allies in Washington. Hey, Supak. It's run by Frank Gaffney, a former member of President Reagan's administration. He is far and away the most influential and high-profile Islamophobe or anti-Muslim advocate on Capitol Hill. He's very effective with his organization. They regularly attack Muslim politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, suggesting that they are seeking to infiltrate the United States government. Now that these Israeli-funded Muslim bashers have reached the highest level of American politics, the entire Muslim world has been vilified as a violent threat. Today, the governments of China Myanmar and India are using the same anti-Muslim tropes Israel created four decades ago to wage genocide against their respective Muslim minorities. But Israel is only getting started. It now even makes up totally insane stories to excuse the Nazis and blame Muslims for the Holocaust. Hitler didn't want to uh, exterminate the Jews at the time, he wanted to expel the Jews. And Khaj Amin al Husseini went to Hitler and said, if you expel them, they'll all come here. So what should I do with them? He asked. He said, burn them. As you can see, Islamophobia is inseparable from the state of Israel, making anti-Muslim hate crimes and Muslim genocides inseparable from the state too. It was Israel that taught the world to hate Muslims. Its lies, tactics and strategies must continually be exposed. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ We can't produce, sustain and grow the show without your help. And we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good luck and stay blessed.